Hi guys. So, so in 2018, I was 36. Um, and I was 290. Um, my, I had type 2 diabetes. It was out of control. Back then, my A1C was 8.9, which for those of you who might not know, that's pretty hot. I wasn't very healthy. I couldn't tie my shoes very well on my own. I know that sounds weird, but it was really hard for me, so I started buying slip-on shoes and all of these things to just try to get by day to day. I would get out of breath real easy. I mean, I do have asthma, but my weight did not help. Um, and so I started trying, you know, I worked with my doctors to try to get my diabetes within range and nothing I did worked. I tried dieting, I tried exercising, I tried all the things, but it just persisted. I lost one of my little stickers. Um, okay, well, I'll just put one of these in there. It just persisted, so, you know, I couldn't just ignore that. I had to do, I had to take care of myself, you know? Sorry, I need to pay attention to you guys too, not just whatever it is I'm doing. Um, so, a friend of mine was having weight loss surgery, and she was talking to me about it, because she was a bigger girl too, and... She thought I should look into it too, so that's what I did, and I did all the research. I researched, researched, or even talked to a doctor or anything. So I just consumed all of the YouTube videos, all of the Google searches, all of everything, and then I decided, okay, I want to talk to, you. I want to look into this. So I looked into my insurance a little bit. Um, and then I made an appointment with my doctor. Um, so I found out that through my research that if you have a BMI higher than, I believe it was 40, I think, or higher with a comorbidity, um, my insurance would cover it. I, having diabetes and to be 40 or higher, my BMI was 54 or something like that, give or take a few, but around that. And, um, so, I qualified with that, and the fact that I had diabetes type 2, that no matter what I did, it was just getting worse and not better. So, um, I qualified. It did take me two years because I went and did a crazy thing and got married, and then I lost my insurance for a little bit, and then I wound up getting it back because I realized I shouldn't have lost it to begin with. But anyway, um, so, yes, uh, I applied to the program, I got in. Um, I started, you know, dieting, all that stuff. I took the, the classes. So when you get approved, um, you have all, like, a whole long list of things that you have to do. Tests, things, um, nutritionists. You have to learn all of the things and you have to prepare yourself for surgery. So that is what I did. And, um... Yeah, I was approved. Sorry, August 26th of 2019, I had surgery. Now, my surgery went, I'm just adding, gonna add these in here. My surgery went really well. Um, but the recovery kind of sucked because I was on so many different medications for all my medical issues that I had during that time that I just... It was a lot of pills and I had to crush them up and put, I'm talking like 26 pills. I had to crush them up and put them in pudding, which at that point, pudding does nothing to cover that taste. Nope. It was all just pills with slight vanilla flavor. It was disgusting. It was horrible. Anyway, um, I have had complications, like even to this day, I knew I would get sick if I got dumping syndrome. If I ate crap, I would feel sick. Which, you know, you go into that with R and Y gastric bypass surgery, knowing that, wanting that to force you to eat healthy. However, to this day in 2024, it's August 2024, it's uh, I think the 24th, um, August 2024, I still get nauseated. 
when I eat or drink anything. It doesn't matter if it's healthy or not. It doesn't matter how many bites I get nauseated. So, um, I've had a prescription basically permanently since 2019. I've been to a gastroenterologist and they don't, there's nothing wrong. My stuff is fine. I just get nauseous when I eat or drink. Fine. That's cool. When I first started losing weight, um, after surgery, I had started seeing a new psych doctor because I have some mental health issues. Anyway, she put me on a medication that while um, it didn't make me gain weight, it prevented me from losing a lot of weight. So this girl was not successful with r one gastric bypass because the most weight you're going to lose and can mostly lose is within the first year. I felt epically. I lost maybe like 30 pounds. Um, no matter how well I ate, I was trying to do keto. Um, I was being really strict. I was counting calories. I was watching carbs, you know, all my macros. I was watching what I drank. Um, basically, um, so I just didn't lose weight. And then once I got off of that specific medication, the weight, because I had gotten COVID, I know, but my husband was a CNA who worked at a nursing home and they got it he brought it home anyway i got really sick because i was immunocompromised at the time i mean not compromised i was immunosuppressed due to my eye condition i've talked about it before anyway so um because of that i had to um when i got sick i got really really sick the only things i could hold down were applesauce and water and um a little bit of apple juice occasionally but i mostly stuck to water um and so i lost weight but because of being so sick i stopped taking all my medications because i just could not hold them down so i was not i refused to take them anyway so i lost weight during that due to not being able to eat but then after that i stayed off my medication and it still can when I was able to go back to eating normal, I still continued to do keto and was eating exactly how I'd been eating the whole time. And the weight just started dropping off. And it stayed off to recently. Um, the last year I've lost, so I had lost a decent amount of weight. I got to 200, I believe. And then this last year, maybe 190, I went all the way down to 149 which is what i currently am now amazing like it's so great i just finally started losing the weight i've i've done the work i've worked really hard i'm very proud of myself and i think i'm doing great yes i have loose skin yes i should have exercised so that i could not you know be as flabby but no matter what you do, especially at my age, that skin is not, it doesn't tighten back up once. Once you lose the elasticity, it doesn't come back no matter how many exercises you do. Now what exercise will do is tone up what muscles I do have, so it'll make this a little bit less noticeable. I don't have money for surgery for that, and I don't even know how to find out if skin removal surgery would be covered. I am going to speak to my um, team at Rockwood Bariatric up in Spokane, Washington, who I had bariatric surgery through to see what they say because they can find out if my insurance will cover it or not but yeah I have you know the bat wings I have that because I've lost so many inches um anyway it'll turn up what muscles I have and then that'll kind of tighten things up a little bit but basically I have mostly loose skin on my thighs um some on my calves not a lot and my tummy and you know my chest in my arms but that's basically all it's not too terrible it's uncomfortable but i don't get rashes or anything. is 28.15 that's down from 54 so but you guys do that math that's about I don't know, like 30 or 25 points which is extremely hard to do so but yes i am very proud of myself i don't really consider my weight loss due to the surgery because like i said the first year is when you lose most of the weight i lost 30 pounds most people start gaining it back after the first year um you know after year two or three and i'm year four and i haven't gained anything Lost 26 points give or two give or take a half a point so from my bmi Bye. Please like and subscribe. Love you. Bye.